Apple launched Gemma, which is an open model based on Gemini technology. So in this video, we're going to learn what are the key things that they have mentioned in Google Gemma technical paper. There are very few shady items in there. So let's get started. The first thing is they have released two sizes of models, a 2 billion parameter model and a 7 billion parameter model. And they have released it as a two variant. One is the pre-trained model, the base model. And the second one is they have released the instruction fine tune checkpoints, the instruction fine tune model. So you can either use the 2 billion base model or you can use the 2 billion instruction fine tune or 7 billion base or 7 billion instruction fine tune model. The next thing that is quite interesting is that the cap size, which defines how much of uh, information that the tokenizer has seen is 256,000. So when you see this number and when you compare it with, let's say something like Llama 2, Llama 2 had a vocab size of 32,000. So this is huge in terms of the amount of vocabulary that it has seen. If you're not familiar with this, imagine like you have got a dictionary and you have got a computer program that can pick one of the words from the dictionary. So the number of words that you have got in the dictionary would kind of define the amount of knowledge that the robot or the code has seen. So the vocab size here is the 256,128 is from where Google Gemma is going to pick one of the word and then show it to you. Whether it will pick all the words is where this becomes an efficient thing. So lesser the vocab size, uh, sometimes it has a very long tail and that's why some companies, uh, some models prefer to have a smaller vocab size. But Google has gone ahead with using 256,000. I'm not sure if it will help when you especially uh, fine tune this for different kinds of use cases. I would uh, definitely would love to see how this is going to translate in the real world in terms of benefits. But it is also a very surprising decision that they've kept the 256,000 vocab size for 2 billion parameter model and also 7 billion parameter model. This might also make it less efficient computationally to run the model because you might not need all the items there. The next or the most controversial item in this paper is the model size. We have seen like even when I made the video, I said like, okay, we have got a 2 billion parameter model and we have got a 7 billion parameter model. And that is exactly what I've been saying. Now it turns out that when you have got the model parameters that can be explained or expressed in two different ways. One is the embedding parameter. The second one is the non embedding parameter. Now what Google has done here is that the non embedding parameter for the 7 billion parameter model itself is 7.7 .7 billion parameters. Now you have got a 0.8 billion parameter here. So that means technically the 7 billion parameter model or what we are calling a 7 billion parameter model is technically an 8.5 billion parameter model. Now this raises a lot of question whether it is fine to call this a 7 billion parameter model, especially when Google is comparing this with Mistral 7 billion parameter model and Llama 2 7 billion parameter model. Even the 2 billion parameter model is somewhere around 2.5, which is I think kind of okay because I've seen a lot of 2 billion parameter model being around 2, 2.5. So it doesn't matter a lot, but a 7 billion parameter model that is equivalent to 8.5 billion parameter summing up the embedding and non embedding parameters. And all these parameters are going to be used in the model. It's not like embeddings are going to be uh, excluded from the model in itself. It's just a design choice and where the parameters are stored. So this is a very shady thing. And I think a lot of people are calling out Google for calling a 7 billion parameter model, which has got 8.5 billion parameter model. Uh, leaving that thing aside, if you want to know how it was trained, so you would have seen like a lot of company, every company has got a different way of training and Google being a company that makes TPUs, a tensor processing unit, the Gemma models were trained on TPU V5E. So TPUs are deployed in the pods of 256 chips. It's a very similar thing when you have got NVIDIA GPU cluster, it's almost like that. They've got pods here. And what they have done is for the 7 billion parameter model, they've used 16 pods. Totally, it is 4096 TPU V5E. So if you want to know the cost, you can probably like do a math about, okay, where does a TPU cost and how much it might have taken. The 2 billion parameter model has uh, been trained on two pods totaling 512 TPU V5E. That is another very interesting aspect to see that there is an 8x, like 8 times difference between the 2 billion parameter model and the 7 billion parameter models hardware infrastructure on which it was trained. In terms of training data, it doesn't give away a lot of information about what is the training data, except saying that you have got 2 trillion tokens 
for the 2 billion parameter model and you have got 6 trillion tokens for the 7 billion parameter model that also kind of explains why do you see a huge amount of vocab size so your vocabulary is high because you are training on a lot of tokens this also ideally ideally speaking should translate into better knowledge in the real world when this model is being used but i've seen like kind of mixed response with respect to it but um but yeah so we'll see when fine tuning happens because this has got enormous amount of a base number of tokens so technically it should at least like that's what i believe it should do better in terms of fine tuning uh, when you compare it with a model with less vocab size but let, we'll see so it has got primarily english data and uh, data from web documents math and code unlike gemini this is not a multi-model model and it is also not trained to be a state-of-the-art model for multilingual tasks it has got multilingual tokens so it is not only english model it has got multilingual tokens in vocab but it is not trained to be the state of the art, like the best in terms of multilingual task. They use sentence piece tokenizer, which is I think what Llama 2 also uses. It splits digits and does not remove extra white spaces. And it relies on byte level encodings for unknown tokens, which is a very common thing. And the vocab size is 256,000 tokens. For the pre-training, they have first taken the data set and the filter the pre-trained data set to remove unwanted unsafe utterances personal information and sensitive data so when you see personal information you can very well say that they have used data set which has got personal information they have not mentioned what is the personal information but typically personal information includes name phone number email and all these things are usually considered to be pii personal identity information so i'm not sure what kind of information they excluded here but it is safe to say that they have used a, some kind of training data that has got personal information they've used both heuristics like rule-based approach and model-based classifiers to just say that okay this is not safe they have to be removed so that is what they have done this is also to improve the quality of data one very interesting tidbit in this paper is that we stage the training to alter the corpus mixture throughout the training data to increase the weight of relevant high quality data towards the end of training. This is a tip that I've seen in the past that when you mix data throughout the training process, not keeping the same data, it increases the final output fine-tuned model or the pre-trained or continuously pre-trained model. So this is to make sure that the data set is like not heavily on the one side which is like let's say good quality and the other side it is bad quality so you have that mixture and i guess it also reduces uh, overfitting which i'm not very sure but google has said that very similar to what they did with gemini they have staged the training to alter the corpus corpus is like the content of the mixture throughout the training process to increase the weight of relevant high quality data towards the end of training now, how did they do instruction tuning? They did instruction tuning with synthetic data. So they didn't use original data, they used synthetic data. And how did they select the synthetic data? It's a text only, English only, synthetic and human generated prompt response pairs. How did they generate the synthetic data is quite interesting. Given a set of held out prompts, so you have got a set of held out prompts, they generate responses from a test model and they generate responses for the same from a baseline model. You've got two models. You've got a test model and you've got a baseline model. So for the same prompt, this generates one, this generates one. Now this is given to a very large judge model or very large model that can actually judge it. And the large high capability model will select the preference about which one is nice, whether this one or this one. And now that is how the supervised fine tuning happens. So the synthetic data generation is very simple. Take a prompt, give it to two different models, the, the baseline model and also the test model, generate the response for the same prompt and then randomly shuffle and then ask a larger model, like more like a blind test and then ask it to pick which one is nice and then use that response. And uh, different prompt set, they have constructed different prompt sets, very similar like what Google, Microsoft did with five, like a textbook approach, not necessarily textbook, I guess, but they've created prompt sets to highlight specific capabilities, instruction following, factuality, and creativity and safety. 
And this has been one of the important things that we have uh, seen very off late that the smaller models have better capability unlike Llama 2s because Llama 2 is a very large unorganized model while the smaller models people are building synthetic data to have a specific task and then the model becomes better for that. This model also have got chain of thought prompting capability and bunch of other capability that you can see here. In terms of the model chat template, which is very important for you to get the highest accuracy when you're using the instruction fine tune model. It is a very simple thing. So you've got user, you've got model. I don't know why did they not go with assistant here. So that's kind of strange. So what user, you've got model, and then you've got a start of the turn, you've got end of the turn. How does it go? So you've got user, the start of the turn, user says knock, knock, and then the end of the turn, and then start of the turn, model's turn starts, model says who's there, and end of the turn, and then model again, like model finishes there. Start of the turn, user, user says Gemma, and uh, end of the turn, and then model's turn starts. So this is how the model knows that this is the point where it has to generate something. Gemma who and end of the turn. So this is how the chat template goes, but you don't have to manually create this thing. You can use the tokenizers, a chat, apply chat template from Hugging Face, which I've shown in my previous video about using this on Kaggle. So the next interesting thing is they've got a lot of benchmarks. They're saying that this model is strong on math and coding. And this has been one thing that I've, uh, I've been uh, um, noticing on a lot of different models. A model that does really well on coding seems to have this emergent capability, or whatever they're calling as emergent capability, to do well on math, like vice versa. I, I don't have enough data to prove this as a point yet, but it seems like a thing like with humans, you know, if you're good with math, you will do better at coding or that knowledge will help you here. I feel like something here is going on. When you train or when you fine tune, when you make a model Excel in one domain, that is highly correlated with another domain like math. It is ideally supposed to do better than that. Otherwise it is technically overfitting. And they're saying that this even surpasses the performance of a code fine tune model. This is not a code fine tune model. This is just a general instruction fine tune model. But they're saying that this surpasses the code fine tune model, which is code llama 7 billion model on MBPP. It's a, I think most basic Python programming, something like that. It's a Python question. And code llama achieves a score of 41.4 while Gemma 7 billion achieves a score of 44.4. So which makes me wonder that how would it be much better if you fine tune this with coding task, which I guess like in a couple of days, we should be able to get to know the answer. Very another interesting factor is they wanted to understand how the model is good at memorizing. And uh, when you give the model all the content and then when you see the percentage exact, how much the model is memorized, you can see the model is learning at almost like uh, the equivalent of palm small and all the models have a similar memorizing capability. Uh, I'm still quite skeptical how important it is at this point, like my knowledge in this memorization is minimized, uh, but also they are saying that, okay, did it memorize personal data and all the other information, which I don't consider very important to me, at least at this point. I guess overall, uh, this paper seems to go into a lot of details but continuing to see that companies release model papers without extensive detail about the training data, except just saying that we used uh, this domain, this domain, this domain. I think it's a little concerning. Mistral did it, Mistral got away with that. Google is doing that now. I know they're doing it because they don't want to get into the legality of somebody suing for copyrights, but um, I'm not sure if it is the healthy way to go about it. Uh, I guess like the biggest, um, everybody's gripe about this entire paper is, how can you call an 8.5 billion parameter model as a 7 billion parameter model and compare it with respective 7 billion parameter models and say that it performs better on 11 tasks out of 18 tasks in a similar model. So I think this is another controversy in Google release, but otherwise I think this is, this is an excellent release from Google. I'm really looking forward to use this model extensively to see how this model performs zero shot and also fine tuning. See you in another video. Happy prompting.